Have you ever hired a web developer that maybe was a little flaky? Maybe he took two weeks to get back to you. Everything was just a little too rushed for him. He needed more time. Well, you're not alone. People have hired web developers. I myself have hired at least 10 or 12 web developers in my professional career. And it has been one of the systemic issues, I think, as a business owner, is you gotta have people you trust. So we're gonna talk about how to hire and fire a web developer. So if you're a business owner, you know that having the right people around you is so critical. But in the first time in your life, you're not the expert. And you've got to trust. My son is a BMW mechanic. Mechanics also have bad reputations, right? You take it in, he says it's gonna cost $1,500. You have to blindly believe them because you're not an expert in cars. Well, the same thing happens with web developers. You sit down with them, you see all their pretty work, you write the check, you sign the contract, and then you wait. This system is inherently flawed. Chapter 13 of Marketing Espionage is all about how to hire and fire a web developer. So let me give you three easy tips to know when you should leave your existing developer. Let's start that with that first. Your existing developer takes forever to get back to you. They don't make changes quickly on your site. They charge you by the hour for every little thing. This is very common and often extremely frustrating and expensive for the business owner. So let's talk about some ways to rectify that. So number one, let's take a look at check references. You guys remember references? A lot of people are like, I don't wanna check references because they always say good things. Well, that has not always been my experience is when you call a reference, they give it to you like it is. They tell you it took a little longer or we didn't quite have the right look and feel, but then we eventually got there. I mean, really listen to those verbal cues. When you call those references, don't just blindly hire them based on what their websites look like. Another big no-no is proprietary backend. <laughs> and it's a fancy, fancy way of saying only that web person can fix or edit your website. We lovingly call this code jail. You're in code jail because only that one person can manage your site. What if you fall out with them? What are you gonna do? So I want you to hold the keys to that kingdom that you can hire and fire any web developer like that and you're not gonna lose a night's worth of sleep. So here's just your cheat sheet. Number one, check their references. Number two, make sure you love the design that you see on their website right away. If they can't build a good website for themselves, it's probably gonna be pretty tough for them to build one for you. And finally, make sure you like them, you have good rapport, they, they get emotionally intelligent conversations with them. Here's the deal is technology, I'm married to a guy that's highly geeky, and he, uh, he thinks in a different way. And then us as creatives and business owners, we think in a completely different way. Now put creatives and techie people together, that doesn't always go very well. So we have to think about making sure that you are matching up with the right kind of developer, an emotionally intelligent developer that listens to you. And then you two can work together to come up with a look and feel that is serving to your business and makes you proud to see it every day. Let me talk to you about an example of my own website. And I've seen this systemically across all my clients, but I'm still learning from my own mistakes too. I'm not a coder, I never was a coder, I'm more of a graphic artist. So I have to trust the nerds in my life with the, the, the code, the technology. So I have hired many web developers. The one that I hired prior to the website I have right now, they bent over backwards initially. They were just absolutely fabulous. They built a website for me. They put their pictures on there. We were partners. And here's the problem is when you break up with them, the next developer will tell you that their code was awful because that's what happens. You will go and you'll go and speak to a bunch of other developers. They will look at your website and they'll say, this code is junk. And every single person who wants you to hire them will always say the code is junk. So what's important for you to remember is that, remember autonomy is key here. When you're building a website, you need to remember, you have to hold those keys. So it needs to be on a non-proprietary system. It has to be, I recommend WordPress. WordPress is by far the easiest and most accessible backend. It's an open source management tool that you could hire and fire a web developer like that and you are the one that have access. This is so important. 
Also, you know, when you're thinking about building a website, remember that the domain name is so important for your online brand. And a lot of domain names are just not user friendly. So when you're thinking about building a brand new website, or maybe you're going through a rebranding of your existing site, think about the domain name. So domain names can be a make or break on a website. So a couple of things to think about is dashes. Just don't put dashes in a domain name. It reduces the effectiveness of that domain by 50%. People just don't remember the domain. Also, don't put LLC, INC, don't put that in your domain name. It just makes you unfindable. So make sure to speak the way you would talk to a brand new customer. Hi, my name's Heather Lutze and we specialize in DIY SEO. So my brain goes to let's purchase a domain that is dyseotraining.com. What? Maybe it's not about your name, but maybe no one ever cared about your name. Remember, as marketers, we've been trained to have unique selling propositions, unique taglines, um, beautifully different logos, unique, is the enemy of findability. Unique means that you are personally responsible to brand that website, to create buzz for it, to get it out there. I don't want you to work so hard. You know, being an entrepreneur is hard. I want to make sure that we are lining up your domain name, your website, your developer with the very best team so you can do what you do best, which is run your business. But I can tell you at the end of the day, when your website goes down, you fire your webmaster, the person who manages your social media walks out the door and all of the logins are in their personal email address. I can tell you that that will take you off task for many days trying to get that rectified. I, I even had a client where they had hired someone's cousin or, you know, we always tend to want to hire the youngest person to our social media, which may not be the best idea because they go and they move, right? They jump from job to job. So when you're thinking about, about your website, make sure that you hold the keys again to the kingdom, meaning we have an executive login sheet. I'm going to make sure I put a link on this page that's going to give you a download. I'm going to give it to you for free. It's called our executive login and it has all the logins, the usernames, the passwords, and the location. You can download it off my website and you have an instant, this is what I need to protect my website. And you'll go through there and you're going to get all of your social media logins, your domain logins, your hosting logins so that when things happen, and they always do, you have that document or you have it saved in uh, like a last pass or something that's encrypted on the cloud. You can, you can instantly pull it out, lock, lock that person out like that, and then you know that you are protected and safeguarded. I've seen so many crazy things in my career. I've seen web developers who register domain names in their name and not yours. I've seen uh, social media people um, that come in and they, they own all the accounts with their own username and passwords. You own the website. The logins to your website are yours, not your web developers. So when you're working or going down the path of either redesigning your website or building a new website, protect yourself. No one is going to protect you. They're only looking out for their interests as vendors. So you as an executive need to download my executive checklist fill it out, sit down with your team and make sure you know where all those assets are. Because trust me, when your website goes down, that will become your number one priority. And I'm sure you have other things to do in your business. Hey, if you loved what I did today, follow me, hit the subscribe button, hit the bell, really important so you get a notification. I'm going to be producing these videos every day and you're going to want to bump in and see what's going on and geek out with me because I love to make geeky technical topics easy and approachable. So I'll see you on my next video. And don't forget to download the executive checklist, protect your business online.